Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So today it's basically going to be a talking video. We don't really have anything planned in terms of the video, so we're just going to go through a bunch of things. I want to touch upon GPU mining, CPU mining, FPGAs a little bit, and ASIC mining. So right now, overall, GPU mining is basically no profitability. As we can see here, I know people have 10 cents per kilowatt hour and they can be profitable, but as soon as we start to up it, as I said, it's 12 cents. There's still profitability to be had, but a lot of GPUs are at break even, depending on difficulty on certain networks. And then if we chuck it up to 15 cents, there's basically no profitability unless you've got 40 series. And then even if we take it up to 17, as you can see here, the profits are basically gone for pretty much every GPU. So I know that a lot of people do have 10 cents per kilowatt hour in that regard, but a lot of people aren't going to have that 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So GPU mining for a lot of people doesn't seem that attractive in my opinion. And the reason that I'm just talking about this is because a lot of people, I see them trying to get into GPU mining and I don't really think it's worth it right now. If you are already in GPU mining and all of your hardware has ROI'd from Ethereum or any other coins that you've been mining, then yeah, if you are profitable, keep mining. However, I think we're in a real slump right now. Just after the Ethereum merge, there was a bunch of coins that we could mine. We had Casper, Radiant, Nexa, Ironfish even was there, Alephium, a bunch of them that we could mine. We had hopes that a lot of them would pop off. Dynex was one of them as well. And they kind of did in the future. So I don't think that there's any coins being produced anymore, or at least developed, that I see the same potential with. A lot of the coins that came out of that, like Radiant or even Nexa, have dropped significantly. The only ones that have done really well, in my opinion, is Casper. Claw AI has done really well over the past couple of months, and probably Alephium. So there's basically nothing out there right now that we can justify mining to hold later on in the future. I think what's ever had a jump up already is probably going to be set in stone for the bull run. It's just my opinion. If you think there are coins out there, then please let me know. However, looking just on, you know, mining pool stats, we can see that there's basically a bunch of random coins that are popping up that are new. A lot of them coming from these Casper kind of algorithms that basically forked off. And then there's a lot of them coming from car power algorithms, which are mainly AI coins. So you see AI deep in, if we go down verse AI. So there's a bunch of AI coins that are coming out, but they're not really that good in comparison to a lot of other coins that we could have mined previously in the past. So when I'm looking at just this list of newish coins that are coming out, I don't really see any potential in a lot of them. So saying that, I do think that there are some ways that you can still be profitable if you have GPUs already set in stone. My advice is if you're trying to get into GPU mining, there's not really much point right now if you're fresh starting off. I'd say ASIC mining is probably the best play for you if you're looking for profitability in this space and for a later date. GPUs aren't going to be a massive profitability puller unless you're in on coins early and you speculatively mine a lot of coins. So even before they hit mining pool stats or hash rate NO, you want to get into those coins. For example, I think Son of a Tech has his locals thing where he gets people into new coins, obviously does the research into them, and that's where they have made, you know, significant profitability. But for the average person that's just coming into GPU mining, I seriously wouldn't recommend buying GPUs just to start mining now. If you have all the hardware there and you're early on on coins, there's normally a period where you're early enough where it's not on any websites like mining pool stats or hash rate NO. And you can make significant profitability when they do hit exchanges because normally there's a massive price upwards when they do hit exchanges. For GPU mining, I'd say if you have the hardware and you get in early for coins, that's probably the only way that you're going to be profitable for the long run, even going on one or two years. I don't think that there's any coins out there that are really going to produce profitability for the foreseeable future for GPU mining. So just to reiterate on GPU mining, if you do have the hardware there, you might as well keep it. There's no point selling it, I don't think. Just because sometimes it does show up like this PC250 from AMD. I know a lot of people got a hold of these and they started mining on them. Let's say that you had that just in storage and then a new coin pops up, which has the highest profitability on these you could gain a little bit of profitability back 
from just holding your hardware and sticking it on this. So always be ready to go with it, but if you don't have any hardware and you're looking to get into it, I seriously wouldn't recommend buying into anything. There's way better price to profitability options out there for miners right now. And then when we're talking about CPUs, this is still a no-go. If you do have the hardware there, obviously, then you can start mining and be profitable. If you've ROI'd, which I don't think that a lot of people have on CPUs, just because the profitability has only peaked up in the last couple of months, maybe six months, that's when the profitability has peaked for GPU mining with Zephyr and other CPU coins. But even these CPUs, like these high-end ones, they're going to be way more expensive than even GPUs. So for example, this Epic is around $7,000. Like we click into one of these, it's $700. So, you know, you might as well get an ASIC for that price or even add an extra $300 and get an ASIC. I think it's pretty much a no-go for CPUs and GPUs. And let's just include FPGAs in that if you want to start getting into mining. If you have the hardware there, obviously, as I said, it's a good place to, you know, gain some profitability here and there. But for the main part, if you're looking into crypto mining for the future, there's obviously going to be ways that you can gain more profitability with better hardware. One thing I do recommend if you do have some hardware, look into stuff like Claw AI or Vast AI, where you can basically rent out your rigs to certain people and they'll probably start mining on your GPU. However, you get kind of a more steady profitability from that if you have low enough power rates and pretty high end machines. So look into these kind of Vast AI, Claw AI renting options. I think Nice Hash is actually a renting option as well. So you could look into that. So then moving on to the ASIC side, as we can see here, there are a bunch of ASICs which are pretty profitable. And as I said, if you're looking into buying higher end GPUs, there are ASICs that are way cheaper and bring more profitability. For example, this iPolo V1 Mini is only 750. You can probably get, I don't know, a 40 series card, a higher end one for around 750 and it's probably going to bring in more profitability per day on this than it would on a GPU. Same thing with the Jazzminer X4 One U, it's 500, brings in probably more profitability than a GPU at that price point. Now this is at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, let's up it to 15 cents. Obviously the margins are way bigger and this is why people go for ASIC mining, is because the margins are way bigger and you can allow for a higher electricity rate. As soon as you get up to 17 cents on GPUs, it's basically break even or unprofitable ranges. But at 17 cents per kilowatt hour here, you can see that we have a bunch of ASICs that are available with varying price ranges that aren't too far out to justify the price. For example, the X4Q, $1,000, brings in around $1.19 per day, and that's obviously going to change over time. Now we can see the payback time as well there. So we're looking around two, three years as we go down here. Obviously the Casper ASICs are doing very well, but I personally would not recommend them because we're going to see more ASICs coming online. You know, every single drop of a new ASIC, there's going to be a massive hash rate increase. And then by the time you get your ASIC shipped out, it might be the rewards might have dropped as well, a significant amount. If you leave it two months, maybe the rewards are obviously going to go down significantly on the emission schedule of Casper. The quickest payback time is actually on the Alephium uh, Gold Shell. I wouldn't recommend buying that either. I think that the profitability per day is going to keep dropping off as time goes on. Obviously, people are going to get these on the network soon, so we'll see how that is affected. And then for Casper miners, even the KS5L is bringing only a payback time of around nine months. And I don't even know if that is based on the emission schedule that might just be based on today's figures so it's probably going to take longer as well as more hash rate comes on the network. So in terms of mining if you didn't know I live in the UK so the electricity prices is very high. Currently I'm working at 0.26 in GBP and that is actually 33 cents per kilowatt hour. So if we up this all the way up to 33 cents you can see that there's not many options there for us to have ASIC mining. It's basically all Casper ASICs. One thing I do want to point out about ASICs is that I think that the ETH hash ASICs or Ethereum Classic hash ASICs are going to do very well just in terms of bringing in steady profits per day. 
So the Casper A6, they bring in good profitability, but I think that we're going to see it start decreasing as time goes on. And even in the UK, I don't think I can get these prices for A6. So I have kind of moved over to a different plan, which is getting into coins early on GPUs. And then I'm looking into buying A6, but I haven't really made the decision yet. Just because the electricity rate is so high here, there's not really much point in me buying an A6. The only ones that I would go for, in my personal opinion, I wouldn't touch any of the Casper ones right now. I would recommend Jazz Miners as a kind of into for ASIC mining. Probably going to go with, if you can get your hold of an X4 brick and you have lower profitability or lower power cost, then this is obviously a, a good buy to get straight into mining. It's going to be low cost. You're not really going to get too much profitability, but at least you get your feet wet in terms of mining. Then after a couple of months, you could maybe roll it into a Jazz Miner X16Q or an X16P. So these are actually relatively good profitability per day. ROI time is around a year for both of these. It just depends on how much money you want to put in. Obviously, the one that would be go-to is the Jazz Miner X16Q, just because you have it for $3,000, as opposed to the X16P, which is $9,000. So you'd be basically spending $6,000 more for the same ROI time. And then you could maybe roll that into, I don't know, another smaller ASIC or if more ASICs come online, then I think you could roll it into that. The reason that I'm saying that these are probably the best bet is because I don't see them making too many more ASICs for the ETH hash algorithms, which means that the profitability is going to be steady and reliable for quite a while. I think Octospace is probably going to be one of the biggest ones that is going to take off. So that would be my recommendation to mine if you can be profitable on it. But as you can see here on the Jazz Miner X16Q on profitability, you can see Ethereum W with Zill. I believe Zill is moving across to something else. So we might have to keep our eyes on this to see if any of the profitability is still there. But Octospace is here. Ethereum Classic is still there. There's a bunch of other coins that are built on the Ethereum hash algorithm that you can still mine for decent profitability. Also, these don't take too much power. The noise is good on them and temperatures are good on them. So you don't really have to worry about them. You can basically put it in the corner of a room. It is going to be significantly loud, but it's not going to be over the top loud. It's going to run at the same decibels as probably a GPU would on full fans. And then if you are looking at lower electricity costs, as you can see here, profits of around 650 or 660 a day. And then as you go down, obviously profits are going to go up. But within a year, you're kind of going to ROI on these. I think it's probably one of the best bets that you can make in terms of ASIC mining. Obviously, if you have the capital there to buy one of these, it'd be a great buy in my opinion, as opposed to any other hardware that we're seeing out there. Casper ASICs are obviously a good buy if you can get them at a decent price as well. But as I said, with the emission schedule of Casper coin and the new ASICs coming on the network, basically every batch is going to be, you know, every three months or something like that. I think that the profitabilities are going to start dropping rapidly for all of these down here. And I think that the jazz miners will actually hold out on profitability than these lower level ASICs that we see. And I just want to make this clear. By no means am I saying that these ASICs are worthless. They obviously bring in good profitability per day. But the amount to buy into them is quite a lot. So you're taking way more of a risk on these as opposed to smaller risk and basically the same ROI time. And that's really what you want to look for is profitability, ROI time, what's the lowest ROI time that you can find at the cheapest price available to still be profitable at your power rate. You know, that's a three segment equation that you've got to go through. But for the most part, I think that the Jazz Miner X16Q is probably the best one that you can get for money and profitability per day at this kind of electricity rate that I was working at. But obviously, if you have lower ones, maybe even 20 cents per kilowatt hour, you can see what shows up now. So there's a bunch of them out there that you can get. As I said, if you want to get the brick, that's still bringing profitability per day, but the payback time is not great on them. Even Jazz Miner X43UZ or just the regular X4, I think that's a bit overpriced. X4Q is a good buy actually at 20 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's really all that I can see there in terms of profitability for that price range. Obviously, the Casper ASICs as well. Lastly, FPGAs, just my opinion, I wouldn't touch any of them. 
too high of a price point. You basically could get ASICs for the same price as FPGAs. If you have them, obviously you can mine on them, but I don't see any ROI times being hit for any of these FPGAs. I don't think it's even going to be possible for a lot of them. So I would stay clear of FPGAs unless you know what you're doing and you have a significant amount of them and you've ROI'd on them. So that's my thoughts and opinions on just crypto mining in general right now. If you like the video or have any comments that you want to make on it, then please leave them in the comment section. And hopefully you guys kind of feel the same. As I said, ASIC is probably going to be the future. I think GPU mining, if it has a resurgence, is going to be a couple of years down the line. Same with CPU mining. And probably then we'll have new GPUs and new CPUs to actually mine with. So make sure you like the video, subscribe. Sorry for talking so long. See you in the next video.